Please stand and face the procession. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. O God of our salvation, in your mercy come to our assistance, that we may enter this holy week with joy as we contemplate the mighty acts through which you have given us eternal life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with them when he had called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went out to meet him was that they had heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, You see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the whole world has gone after him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. O God, who through your prophets foretold our King's coming, we give you thanks for fulfilling your word, and we pray that you would use these palms to remind us of the day he entered Jerusalem. Bring us who bear them, bless us who bear them, and grant that we may rejoice in his salvation in the heavenly Jerusalem. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us go forth in peace. In, in the, the name, name of, of the Lord. Lord.
What a wonderful day in church that we got to have a palm parade. Today, I have got a couple jobs I need you to help me with for children's message. The first job is put your palm branch right in your lap. And whenever you hear me say, we praise you, King Jesus, I want you to pick it up and say, Hosanna to the King. So let's try it. Put it in your lap and you're not touching it. You ready? We praise you, King Jesus. Hosanna to the King. Back it up. Okay, good. The second thing I need you to help you with is I have some things in my bag and I'm going to give you some clues. And I want you to listen to the whole clue. Then I'm going to point to you. And then, this isn't like school, you don't have to raise your hand. When I point to you, you're going to say what you think is in the bag that matches the clue. Okay, you ready? We've got our palms in our lap. Okay, clue number one. Clippity-clop, clippity-clop. I rode into town with a man on top. Donkey! That's right. It's a donkey. Our story of Palm Sunday begins with a donkey. You see, Jesus was going to go into Jerusalem, and he told two of his disciples, I want you to go ahead, and there's a donkey tied up. I want you to tell the donkey's owner, the Lord needs this donkey, and he'll give it to you. And they brought the donkey back, and Jesus got on the donkey. We praise you, King Jesus. All right, you ready? Clue number two. I am the green part of a plant. People waved me as they did chant. Yeah. You see, as Jesus was coming in to Jerusalem, well, this is a fake one. I thought it looked bigger. Jesus was coming in. The people began to go along the road and make it a parade, and they grabbed the palm branches, and they waved them. We praise you, King Jesus. To the king. Clue number three. You put me on when you feel chilly. I was put on the road in a land that's hilly. Coat. Yeah, a coat. A coat. Or robes, yes. We call them jackets or coats. You see, in Jerusalem, the roads weren't made of concrete or asphalt. Instead, they were made of dirt. And when the donkey would get on them, the dirt would get all kicked up and people would get dusty. But they didn't want Jesus to get dirty, so they laid their coats down. So when the donkey went on top, Jesus didn't get dirty. We praise you, King Jesus. All right, you ready for the next one? Here we go. Clue number four. I am hard and round and silent, no doubt. If the people were quiet, these would shout. Yeah. You see, the Pharisees, they were not at all enjoying this parade. Too noisy. The people were liking Jesus way more than them. Very jealous. And they went to Jesus and they're like, Jesus, make these people stop. And Jesus said, if the people stopped, the rocks and stones would sing my praise. We praise you, King Jesus. All right, my last one. I led the parade into town. I am a king with thorns in my crown. Jesus. Jesus, that's right. You see, Jesus was riding into Jerusalem to be our savior. In just a few days, It'll be Friday, and on Friday, Jesus got a crown of thorns, and he was put on a cross, and Jesus died. He did that to forgive our sins, but we know that's not the end of the story. We know on Easter morning, Jesus rose to give us new life. We praise you, King Jesus. Santa to the King. Hold your hands and pray with me. Dear Jesus, you are my king. Thank you for dying to take away my sins. Thank you for rising to give me new life. Help me tell others all about you this holy week. 
In your name we pray. Amen. Boys and girls, you may get a handout and return to those who love you. Please stand. O oh Lord, with the Palm Sunday crowd, we cry to you this day. Hosanna, save us now, we pray. Save us, for we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Save us, for we have sinned against you by what we have done and by what we have left undone. Save us, for we have not loved you with our whole heart. Save us, for we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of Jesus Christ, the Son of David and the Son of God, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us. By your Holy Spirit, enable us to walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Jesus Christ became obedient to death, even death on a cross so that through faith in him you could receive life and salvation. It is in his name, the name that is above every name, that I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord be with you. Most merciful God, as the people of Jerusalem with palms in their hands gathered to greet your dearly beloved Son when he came into his holy city, grant that we may ever hail him as our King, and when he comes again may go forth to meet him with trusting and steadfast hearts and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Palm Sunday Old Testament reading comes to us from Isaiah chapter 50. 
The Lord has given me the tongue of those who are taught, that I may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Morning by morning he awakens. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I turned not backward. I gave my back to those who strike, and my cheeks to those who pull out the beard. I hid not my face from disgrace and spitting. But the Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near, who will contend with me. Let us stand up together. Who is my adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God helps me. Who will declare me guilty? This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle reading is recorded in the second chapter of Paul's letter to the Philippians. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. 
Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I'd like to remember with you what two groups of people were thinking about, what they were talking about. To watch both of them is to understand the significance of Palm Sunday in the life of Jesus first, and then also to understand the significance of Palm Sunday for the life of Jesus' people today, us. The first group you might be most familiar with, or at least you understand their motivations best. If you happen to recall, last we heard about Jesus was an amazing miracle, the raising of Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus, come out, Jesus shouted. You might, of course, also remember the hurt in the voice of Martha, Lazarus' sister, in the minutes leading up to that might remember her brave confession of faith in who Jesus is, made in a time of suffering. It's a thing to behold. She was deep in mourning. She felt betrayed by none other than Jesus. And yet, digging deep into what she had heard him say before, what she wanted to trust for in the future, she talked about him being the Messiah, that he'd bring resurrection on the last day. And many were there that day to see what happened, what Jesus did. Likely there were conversations aplenty with old Lazarus. Because you see, people who saw marveled. And marveling, they believed. But after raising Lazarus, Jesus, he goes away for a time. No longer in the town of Bethany, a couple miles from Jerusalem. But he scurries off to a place called Ephraim, 
named for one of the 12 tribes of Israel so long ago. The text of John's Gospel tells us little about the place, just the name, that it was small, that it was right on the edge of the wilderness, and that Jesus went there alone with just his disciples. But then soon the text of the Gospel jumps back to Jerusalem, and it mentions that the great city is starting to swell with people. Because you see, Passover is about to begin. So folks from every tiny town are traveling to Jerusalem. The gospel tells us that they are there early to purify themselves. And I don't know what all that entails, other than I can guarantee that it brought economy to the temple and the area. But rather than just walk their usual steps and pray in their usual places, this year there's a conversation. It's in the air and just can't help but be heard. There's talk about Jesus of Nazareth, raising Lazarus of Bethany from the dead. And the people wish to see him. They wish to see them both. Who knows, maybe they remember bumping into Jesus during Passover before. Maybe people still whispered stories about the time during Passover that a 12-year-old conversed with scholars in the house of God. Then the text jumps again back to Bethany. I don't know how long Jesus spent away in Ephraim, but soon enough he's back, traveling with his disciples, and he's visiting his friends. And no surprise, Martha and Mary, her sister, and Lazarus, their brother, wish to have a party. And now listen, I've had some fun at birthday parties, had some fun at wedding receptions, but I've never even been to a resurrection party. I bet they're amazing In fact, I hear some people are dying to have one themselves. (laughs) See, they've always taken good care of Jesus and his band of brothers in Bethany. But you can imagine that they would have pulled out all the stops this time. And word spreads that Jesus is back in Bethany with Lazarus and all those people in Jerusalem who wanted to see him, to see them, they make the walk. It's not far not far in those days. They had been in Jerusalem to purify themselves, but word about Jesus arrives and they kick up all the dust in the world, hoofing it to Bethany to see him, leaving behind the big city and bright lights with all its shops and eateries. They want to see the house party that Martha and Mary and Lazarus threw. And on that walk, I don't know, maybe they wondered what kind of wine they bought. Good stuff, I bet, for Jesus. What kind of hors d'oeuvres would be served? But it's weird, though, because when they get there, most of the money that was piled together to make this thing happen and happen in a manner worthy of Jesus, it was spent on a perfumed lotion that Mary breaks out at the least opportune time and wipes all over Jesus' feet. The smell bursts through the windows to all who are gathered near. They rush to see what amazing thing is being done. And all they see is one act of worship, done in humility, done in love. But as soon as it's done, it's done. They aren't sharing it around. They're not treating everyone like that. Jesus then suggests keeping whatever's left for his death. Now, I've read all this before, but... For whatever reason, it just struck me this year that these folks left Jerusalem to see the one who has power over death and to see Lazarus too. And likely, when they all begin to approach Jerusalem in the days later, some of these folks are still walking with Jesus. When people who are still inside the city hear that he's coming and they line the street shouting Hosanna and waving those freshly cut green branches and shouting about Jesus, their king. That's one crowd that I want you to know about. Mostly you already do. But there's other conversation going on. Not a conversation that's shouted in the streets, but a conversation that's whispered in the dark. You might remember that as soon as Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, a sign that, as you know, brought many to faith, some others slinked away, and they brought news to Jesus' enemies. 
and in fear that he would disrupt their power, they begin to not only wish him dead, but plan for his death. I knew that. It was in last week's reading. But what I always seem to forget is that when they find out that people are chasing Lazarus around because of what Jesus did, they decide to kill Lazarus too. You see, they felt like they couldn't have the evidence of the power of this man just walking around and talking about it all the time. He was a literal living witness to the power of Jesus over death. I mean, talk about no good deed going unpunished. Got to kill Jesus, they said. Got to get rid of Lazarus, too. That poor guy. How many times, I wonder, did Martha and Mary have to mourn him? It's an evil, I think, not considering those survivors' pain. And those weren't the only whispers about it all. When many in the temple, you remember, were talking about wanting to see Jesus, others were there, they were quieter about it. They wanted to lay eyes on him, not to worship, but to spy, to relay information about his whereabouts. He'll come here eventually, they thought. How many of them made the trip to Bethany? I don't know. I would bet not many, maybe even none. But even in Bethany, there was wicked intent afoot too. When Mary spreads the lotion, Judas was near. Judas, who had traveled with Jesus for years, all around, even this most recent trip to Ephraim and now back. Not amazed, I guess, at what Jesus did. Judas was just greedy for what he got. He tried to play off his anger at Mary's use of the lotion in a way that maybe others would agree. Frivolous woman, silly and wasteful. But that's not what he meant. What he meant was that he wished to have that money in the treasury because the treasury was his own personal spending account. Now I know, and you know, we attempt to rob God often, squandering what he gives, our talents, our resources. Mostly we squander opportunities to use those to be generous to others. But to actually reach into Jesus' wallet and take that's an ugly thing. And I feel that every time, this time of year, as we watch Judas, his betrayal, with a little bit of sadness, wishing that his heart was not as dark as death, especially because he spent so much time near into life. Leave her alone, Jesus said. She'll need it for later. Today, my sisters and brothers, we join, I pray, the first crowd, the one that watches with glee, worships, and shouts about our King, a part of the crowd that desires to see, to get close to the one who has power over death. But we do that amid other voices that speak against Jesus. He once told his disciples, and I'll tell you again, the world it will always hate you because it has always hated me. Especially those who seek power instead of humility, who seek control instead of love, who seek riches instead of sacrifice. There is no greater threat to their lives than the one who controls death and brings life from the grave. But I ask you to hear that today with joy and hope, not fear or paranoia. In the days when excitement was growing to see Jesus, so also were the whispers. And yet the crowd swelled anyway, prayed anyway, worshipped anyway, and we should do the same. This week, walk out your door and waste your precious perfume as often as you can as a witness about the joy that it is to kneel in worship or to be at table with Jesus. Follow the king triumphant to the ceremony where he is crowned with thorns and instead of dispensing pleasantries to the crowd, sheds blood and lavishes us with forgiveness. Believe in the midst of pain that victory is ours, now hidden, but life will reign fully one day. Hosanna, King Jesus.
Save us now and save us forever. And help us to carry the message of salvation to an apathetic and broken world. And bring our joy into the light and help us pay no attention to the whispers in the dark. Help us to live humbly in your outrageous kingdom where ridiculous generosity defeats greed. Where the death of holiness gives holy life to the world. And the great king rides into enemy territory, not to conquer but to sacrifice. Because you alone are worthy of our worship and our praise and our time and our love. You, O great defeater of death and humble king. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. King of glory, Lord of hosts, lift up the gates of our hearts to make way for your blessed Son. Forgive our sins and renew our souls, that we might glorify him who died to save us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord God, our King, your Son entered Jerusalem as the true ruler, ready to lay down his life for his people. Grant this same mind to those in authority over us that they would discharge their duty even as for the least among us, and so receive your commendation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. According to your gracious will, O Lord, look on all who suffer illness or disability. We especially remember Freya, Mike, Debbie, Christine, Colin, John, Sheila, Wanda, Lisa, Vernon, and even those we name in our hearts. Bless them with what is best for them according to your good and gracious will and strengthen their faith. Open our hearts to serve their bodily needs. Take into your care those who mourn the death of loved ones, especially those who mourn the loss of Marge and others who are known to you. Give them peace and comfort through your holy word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Lord, as your son once entered humbly into Jerusalem to cries of Hosanna, so send him to us according to his promise in this holy sacrament, that today we might eat and drink his body and blood in repentance and faith for the forgiveness of sins. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We praise you, Father, that you have sent your Son not in wrath but in mercy as we enter this most holy week and ponder anew the mysteries of your great salvation. Show us once again the answers to your people's hosanna by the passion, by the death, by the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross, that where death arose, their life also might rise again, and that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he broke it, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. In the same manner also after supper, he took the cup, and when he had blessed it, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Now may this, the true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith and the life everlasting. Depart this day in his peace. Amen. Merciful and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the body and blood of Jesus that we receive in this sacrament. 
It is our assurance that you do not condemn us, but rather bestow undeserved kindness upon us. Bless us through this holy week as we reflect on the great sacrifice Jesus made for us. Increase and nourish our faith through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.